Yo, what up, pod racers? Are you like me where you sunburn easily? Have narrow shoulders you want to hide from the world? Weirdly small nips? Great news, we have a solution. Original table top shirt designs. Reading Rainbow, Dungeon Club, a dungeon in a dragon. Find these and more over at patreon.com slash goblins growlers shirt club at the $25 tier. These are all exclusive limited run designs. We'll never bring them back again. So be sure you get yours by signing up at patreon.com slash goblins growlers. Yippee! I need you all to know that, like, for me right now, the soundtrack to this fight is Acid House Song, and it is mm-hmm. a very fun encounter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which also, the idea of using Acid House for Dream Ga- Dream- Green Dragon encounters is... I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Save that idea, Gabe. <laughs> o- OC idea, do not steal. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe, I didn't realize you were still there. I thought you had gone to like the bathroom or to get oh, a God. snack or something. I thought we were saving this to future Gabe. I didn't realize that you were. I, what were you doing? Napping under your desk? What was happening there? Gabe's always literally right off frame. Oh, my God. Guys, mm. the idea of like an actual play series where like all the like types of monsters have a type of house music that like plays <laughs> in an encounter with them is a really fun idea. We, the look not... of concern that Gabe just gave tells me everything I need to know about that. We're not making Gabe compose house music unless he wants to compose house music. Is it composing house music just putting like three um, loop tracks together? You go and you're straight, straight yeah. to hell. Yeah, you're going this could be really, to hell. Hell. really fast. How dare you? <laughs> this is Quid Pro Roll. A fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Well, howdy listeners. Welcome to the Daily Crier Listening Show, where all the news and varying and beyond can make its way right to you. Now, the group finished up moving corpses around in the glade, Koza infusing a few of them with animating fungus uh, to watch over them as they camp for the night. Cole uncovered the hidden relic, and the party made decisions to travel by way of Beacon Heath to Saxon Heath to see if Johannes' parents would be both capable and willing to take care of uh, Cole. Well, eventually, they all make their way to Beacon Heath and spend the night there after Johannes brings the whole in together in a rousing Beacon Heath fight song. And we last left off with Solinar waking up early and finding a man looking for a letter and then tailing him out of the building after hearing about Green Dragons. Now I've got a question. What's your fight song, listener? What gives you both inspiration and identity? I'm looking forward to a nice song and dance later. We'll see. In any case, as always, y'all take care now. All right, go ahead and roll stealth for me. 19. You are able to keep to the shadows and stay low as you follow this person who's going to continue kind of like looking around. He's going to go a bit ways into the woods, back from where you guys had previously come through. So back into the woods themselves. He's not going to be traveling for very long, you ducking behind trees and bushes and the like to maintain your stealth, before you're going to see this sort of green mist though not quite as dense and opaque as the previous mist that you're familiar with was. And you're going to hear a deep, low sound of something large breathing. This guy is going to then come up, sitting, well, lounging is a better way to describe it, on an enormous stone dace is going to be an enormous green dragon, sort of lazily 
regarding the space around him. On seeing a large green dragon, uh, Solinar is going to do his best to listen in, but making himself as non-visible as possible. Roll Arcana for me right now. Oh boy. Everyone's favorite listening stat. That's about what I thought is a nine. Definitely listening. (laughs) This person is going to entreat the dragon from protection. You're going to hear sort of this raspy grumble in its chest before it responds, discussing the payment it will require for the ensured protection of Beacon Heath. You know better than anyone that what this description is, is extortion. It's a protection racket. I've I've run a few of those. I mean, Solinar. Solinar's run a few of those. It's a great, a great village you have here. It'd be a shame if a dragon destroyed everything. <laughs> that is mostly the, descri- the discussion you're going to overhear before he is going to turn around and start returning to the town. I think if possible, uh, before, like, as the conversation seems to be winding down a little bit, Solinar is going to creep off. And then once he's fairly confident he is out of sight and earshot, he's going to double time it back to the end. All right. Everyone else, uh, until Solinar arrives, you have kind of assembled into the main hall of the inn, sort of taking a load off, taking a rest. What are you guys currently doing? Team of the morning, assemble! Okay, everybody. I want everybody at their cooking stations. Just because Solinar isn't up yet doesn't mean we can't have a good breakfast ready. Boat, you know what to do. Uh, I'm gonna make some coffee. Coffee and pancakes. Come on, man. You guys, this is your staple. Don't <laughs> don't make me tell you your own game. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, okay, I'll make some pancakes. Koza! <laughs> don't give me wa ba ba Get started oh. on your specialty. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Um, um, oh my gosh. Um, oh, okay. Um. Uh, my god, uh, man, don't uh, make me cut the vegetables for you myself. I'm already over here making uh, f- the bacon. Oh, 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 um, uh, uh as he goes, is just saying, like, um, uh, 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 um, and like, as he's saying this, he's like perfectly confidently, like, goes outside, plucks some mushrooms, and just comes back inside and puts them on a cutting board and slices them all perfectly. Um, uh, uh um, 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 uh, um, oh, um, here you go. <laughs> Good. The eggs are already ready. Throw them in there so I can make the omelets. That's the sound of mushrooms being thrown into the... Fire sounds. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cooking pan sounds. Popping oil sounds. Okay, cousin, now go squeeze those limes so that we got some good lime juice. The sound of cracking eggs. Now the sound of a knife going through a lime. The sound of a lime twisting on a juicer. The sound of lime juice drops. I love the idea that there's an episode... That instead of Gabe putting in the sound effects like he will often do, mm-hmm. it's just me and Chapman coming in with creaking door sound, <laughs> shuffling feet sound. Boat opens like the bottle of maple syrup for the pancakes to a distinct cork <laughs> sound. No cork sound. I don't know how you expect us to keep a bottle of pancake syrup closed without using a cork. Mm-hmm. What in oh. what universe? Have any of you seen a bottle of maple syrup enclosed with a cork? Uh, In a universe that yeah. doesn't have plastic? <laughs> um, Screw on. tops existed no. before plastic. No, okay, you, don't I, I get, will... you don't get container sealed screw tops until you've got mass manufacturing. You don't yeah, have mass machine. manufacturing. In a high fan, like okay, this is I, I got Google Haven. when screw tops I, were I invented. Have to, I have to also give it to <laughs> Alex. Alita, <laughs> tell, get on the juice squeezing with Koza. We gotta get this te- breakfast ready. Tell here is absolutely able to make screw tops. Um, I'm sorry, did you call it Tell? <laughs> I here? Tell here. 
Tell no, here? Fine. You mean Talair? No, no Tell here. The Arkana Village. Now get um, on stuff. I also, oh, oh, I brought this. I brought this tray full of um of, of jars of spice. Um, you may want to open each cork bottle and take a sniff to decide which of these twelve bottles is the right one for you. Really, you I'm gonna do exactly them. that unless somebody busts in and interrupts us with critical news right about now. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna have to go through this exact <laughs> recipe on how to make these omelets. First, you gotta brown the onions. There they go. Josh, end my suffering, please. Toss some peppers in, different colors if you can. Get a little bit of char on them, high heat, low. Josh! Uh, so movement. Solonar kicks the front door open. Uh, who's, who's in the inn right now? Clearly, clearly your whole party. Clearly the whole party is taking over the kitchen. Is there like a barkeep or someone who's just looking very confused they're cowering possibly, in the corner possibly pleased that all the work for preparing today's breakfast is being done by the patrons or is it just us don't get close this is your day off <laughs> brandishes a cooking knife as you say yeah. that <laughs> it's, um, it's just a giant massive knife I gotta tell you, if I came into my shift one day and one of my regulars, like, brandish a cleaver at me to say, it's your day off, don't do this, I'd have questions before I would be relieved that someone mm -hmm. had taken my shift. And the first questions would be, is it acceptable to dial 911 in the establishment or do I need to step outside first? <laughs> uh, well, if it looks like it's just us, then Solonar is going to be like, okay, so... Uh, there was a guy, and I tailed the guy, and he went to a green dragon shrine, and then he went out to talk to a green dragon, and apparently, this entire town is under a protection racket being run by green dragons. Tell me something I don't know, Sol and I. Well, I, we might have known that, like, green dragons were in the area, but, like, this is... I listened to a green dragon tell a guy that if they didn't pay up, that something bad was going to happen to their town. Like, I heard that occur. Johannes points above the bar where the, it says, pay up or the green dragon will come. Well, but that could have just been like an old wives' tale kind of, you know, like, I'm talking oh, yeah. about a literal green dragon. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what wives are saying these days. Well, especially the old wives. Oh my gosh, they say the darndest things. Some of the wisest wisdom you'll ever hear. Talking yeah. about how the green dragons are going to come over here. Old wives talk about that kind of thing all the time. <laughs> all the time. You go to any street corner and it's just like, oh, yesterday's news, but you tell it better than yesterday. Johannes, my darling, if, if if this is the voice in the sky saying this, just to be clear, uh, the women that stand on the street corners and talk about that are not the old wives. Oh, uh, they're the new wives. We got old wives, which have... Uh, they're at least the second wives. Old anyway. money, new money. Old wives, new wives. Old wives, new wives. Anyway, there's green dragons uncomfortably close to this town. So I think we should mosey sooner mm. than later. Mm. Away from the green dragons? Yes. Yes, indeed. Just Ideally... Just making sure we're not all talking about fighting a group of green dragons. No, I think we've got our plates plenty full right now. Thank you very much. Okay. That's right. And you better be empty by the time I'm done with you. Was it a group or was it just one, Solonar? I only saw the one, but the way the one talked made it sound like that one could bring more down on this town very quickly. Now, that's a little bit me reading between the lines, but... I feel pretty confident about this. One dragon on his own is generally enough, isn't it? Well, it's hard to have uh, a protection racket if you don't have multiple individuals in the racket. Yeah, well, how's the saying go, Boat? If you got a protection racket, you better back it. That's, that's right. That's exactly how it goes. Um, so, so, sorry, we're going to go play, um, um, racquetball after we finish breakfast? I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's 
it's smart for us to get out of here. The second the the second part of the old saying that Johannes left out is you go against the racket, they'll get a bat in your knee, they'll crack it. <laughs> so what's the plan? I mean, I think uh, I think we're headed to Marine, right? That's that's the destination. Yeah, we will liberate this town at a later date. <laughs> We needed. We were gonna stop by Johannes's family's place, right? Is that is that near here? Well, Alita pulls out a map. Um, <laughs> so Beacon Heath is to the southeast of Saxon Heath, which I think Johannes is where your family is from. That is true. Man, I've been cooking beacon this whole time. It's a bit of it, it it's taking sort of a hook shape if we go from there from here to there to marine, but it's not so much of a detour that it'll put us terribly off. Well, there's also the possibility of Cole staying with Johannes's family instead of staying in the Alarian capital city, which with you know, Barosian soldiers on the shores may not be the safest place for a child. The entire time you guys have been having this discussion, you turn and realize that Felix has been desperately trying to wrest an open bottle of maple syrup from Cole, who is insistent on trying to drink directly from it like it is a bottle of soda. Oh, he'll learn. I've had the tummies, the tummy aches before. Picked up some bad eating habits with the Baba Yaga. Yeah, her eating habits are pretty childish, I would say. <laughs> Gabe physically whatever, wins! Whatever, whatever she's putting her menu together, she's always kidding around with that thing. Mm -hmm. I've never made Gabe visibly wince with one of my jokes before. It's good to find the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Man, Once, I'm not at the bottom of the barrel. I'm in the topsoil at this point. Once you mm -hmm. eat at the Baba Yaga's house, you got to really sit down and let it gestate for a while. All right. That one was gross. <laughs> that was, yeah, that, that means, one made me have a tummy ache. That means we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the standard. We make Alex nauseous and then we can move on with the story. Yeah, gestate. Oh. More like I gestate. Oh, man, <laughs> we got to move on. It's time to hit the road. Alex, do you want to roll for nausea for yourself real quick before we go? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, we okay. are better than this. I don't uh... think we are. So as you all complete and then complete your breakfasts, you're going to get geared up to head out. Is there anything you all need to do in this town before you head out? Would there be an email for me at the post office? Didn't you tell people to mail you back at Marine? Uh, hey, I thought you told people is, to mail you back at Marine. This is a magical world. You never know when <laughs> yeah, you might not, get a letter. The mail It's not Harry Potter, man. They're not going they, they don't send it by owls that'll hone in on your location. <laughs> no, I love that Coz is saying that while he's at the like post office. He's like, this is a magical world. You never know when you might get a letter. <laughs> One of the postmen has a has a pile of letters for sad, lonely people that were just sort of left at places. Oh, my well, God. They're labeled sad, lonely person. <laughs> sad, lonely letters. Instead of letters to Santa, yeah. it's letters to <laughs> sad. To... Sad. <laughs> okay, I letters look at the to again. Santa, Santa. Uh, I... <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a cleric of sad to. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a. That's my I, new. That's my patron. <laughs> the Claire, like Santa, is famous for his his very laconic saying, "Ho ho hum." <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration point, Brandon. Excellent. Wow. I really like the idea of instead of doing classified ads, uh, Alaria just has people who are lonely singles send letters to sad lonely people. And then it's like, I am a 34 year old <laughs> wood nymph seeking someone who likes long walks and getting lost in nature. Unfortunately. Mostly so I can lure you to your death. <laughs> Alita's would be something like, it doesn't matter if you're ugly, just look at me and it won't be a problem anymore. That is actually a thing that you guys haven't talked about yet. Being ugly? Because we're all so good looking. 
I was actually talking about the thing that Baba Yaga said to y'all about that. Yeah, I don't think we're going to test that, We are all ugly. (laughs) I'm sorry, what was that? In the eyes of God, we are all ugly. All right, that sounds like the thing that you would buy a t-shirt with a possum on it and says that, so... (laughs) Maybe you're a god. In Koza's house, he's got that in place of a live, laugh, love. (laughs) <laughs> in god's eyes we are all ugly and then it's a picture of a frowning hatsune miku mm-hmm. um well i don't think we're gonna test the thing that baba yaga told us about unless we want to find an unsuspecting victim and have them like hey hey you over there look at this woman hey Rome, look at her we- real good okay i was gonna ask i was gonna ask um if you could remind he and the listeners um what baba yaga said <laughs> She said a couple of things, but one of the things that she said was that the idea that looking at a nymph's face makes you blind is actually inaccurate. It was a lie that was told to the Fae. Um, No, she said that it was a curse, a curse that 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 she applied for the Fae. Yes, and that Alden told them that it was just a natural thing of being Fae. Oh, the curse was because she applied for the Fae, but they rejected her. No, Baba Yaga was already Faye. She didn't need to put an application. She was naturalized in. Um, but yes, that she had cursed the nymphs, that if you look at the, as a protection for the glade, that if you looked at their face, you'd go blind. And that now that Alden's gone and the glade of the nymphs has been essentially destroyed, that the curse does not exist any longer. Yeah, which Solinar immediately was like, we're not testing that because that might be a sick joke. And she's like, what's the punchline? And he's like, a room full of people go blind. And then she laughed, which proved that it very well could just be a sick joke. Yeah, that was the Baba Yaga laughing and not Alex finding that the delivery of that line really funny. Yeah. Nice (laughs) glady. Yeah, that's I love a good Jerry Lewis joke. <laughs> yeah, this is purely for one member of our audience, which was uh, Can we get, on an on call. With what us. would what would Jerry Lewis's um, fantasy world name be? Like, what would his name be if he were in a fantasy world? Yeah, I don't know, but he would probably look at a nymph and be like, "Nice fady, <laughs> guys, guys, what is happening?" Jarrell Ewis. Mm, there we go. <laughs> Superman's father. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jorel. <laughs> anyway that, by that, the way uh, the name? superman comic that came out yesterday just so people know the variant of it has nicholas cage as superman mm-hmm. i just as it was always meant to be yeah i just think that's important for people to know oh also this is going to be out by the time that people see this but if you're in rva the bird theater is doing a um nick cage week yeah so yeah, come Friday, I'll be there. So yeah. get in your time machines, listeners. And if you yeah. ever want to hear the troubled story of the failed John Peters production of Superman that was to star Nicolas Cage, I would advise anybody to get the DVD A Night with Kevin Smith. And he talks about how he was hired to write a treatment for that. And it was the most bonkers thing. Yeah. And if you ever want to hear my story about traveling to baths in order to find Nicolas Cage's apartment to worship him. You can just talk to me on the street. Go up to Elon, find Mm -hmm. him, just find the gangliest, most cryptid man you can. Which is less hard than it might sound, given how many times all of us have been walking around somewhere with Elon and he runs into somebody that he knows. All the time. That is actually true. Just say Nick Cage to me and we will go from there. If you look in the mirror in a darkened room with a candle and say Nicolas Cage three times, you'd think it would summon Nicolas Cage. But in no. fact, it summons a to yeah. tell you the story of the time. So you tried to find Beetlejuice Cage rule applies yeah. too. you just say Nick yeah. Cage three times and Alon just appears wherever you yeah. are. So excited about it. Um, That's how people on desert islands summon a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, So how are we going to test this blindness situation? I don't think we are going to test this blindness situation. If it comes up, it comes up. And hopefully it doesn't because... What if... What if we go to the local prison and we find somebody who's sentenced to death and we have Alita look at them and then that way if they go blind, it's no great loss because they're going to be put to death. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, Boat, of all the things I feel like we could spend our time valuably doing right now, I don't think figuring out whether or not it's chill for Alita to not wear her mask right now is really, really high on that list. I feel like Alita is probably pretty used to wearing the mask at this point. Am I correct? Just say no. Just just do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very uncomfortable for me, and I don't enjoy it. I haven't really thought about it. It's just been something I've done. I haven't really thought about whether or not I enjoy it. But I do think that he's right in that there are more important things right now. Well, pardon me for trying to come up with a side quest. I I don't know that blinding strangers because you don't merit their life as having value makes me feel good inside. No, though. the justice system already merited their lives as forfeit. <laughs> I'm just saying we take advantage of this loophole in morality and, uh, you know. Morality doesn't have <laughs> loopholes. We gotta abolish prisons. <laughs> Johannes, not now. Crime and punishment has gone too far. And not enough people are eating their breakfast that I've made all morning with the help of my friends. Oh, while all this Solonar. has been going on, Boat's taken some omelets and rolled them up inside pancakes and then dipped them in syrup and started eating them. Ooh. You don't have any syrup. Cole you, already drank the whole mushroom bottle. mushroom omelets. <laughs> so? Yeah, they're good. Sweet can go with savory sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, but mush... Oh. What's the what's As, the what's the variant equivalent of maple syrup? What do they call it there? Morris syrup. I'm actually queasy. I'm all right. It's gonna be Morris syrup from now Morris on. Morris syrup. <laughs> I love some Morris syrup on my pancakes. It was invented by Jameis Morrison. You know, I love how every time we have something major plot related happen. There's always an episode or two afterwards that we're just completely unhinged feral goblins. He's also the inventor of the codpiece. Mm -hmm. The Morris oh. codpiece. Oh, we should have put some cod in our omelets. Oh my god, if you make me throw up on stream, I'm making you listen to it. Well, we're not streaming. Gabe oh. can edit it out. <laughs> um, no, that sounds like bonus content Alex. to me. You need to understand that this is what people find delicious in Averian. No, it isn't. Uh, well, there are I specifically four characters have here. in my notebook. Whatever Chapman says is delicious in Virian is not delicious. Oh, well, it's well, in the in notes. The well, in the well, we should have brought this up before four of the characters in this world have established that this is a delicious meal. You guys Look, have already, a, you're a cult. It's fine. If you are not going to eat the food, then we might as well get going. What? What's What's on our to-do list? Are we going and visiting my family? I believe yeah. that was all yeah. the plan. Boat's grabbing a plastic bag, dumping some pancakes in there, slathering some Morris syrup into it, and then putting it in his pack. Good. Take some to go. Oh, that's so gross. It's like McDonald's <laughs> hotcakes. Yeah, no, it's not. It's really not. Image, I said yeah. just the pancakes, not my not my omelet crepes. I'm just yeah. I'm imagining like a Ziploc bag with just like <laughs> a mushroom omelet and some maple syrup that's been like in the bottom of a backpack for a day of hiking. I am I mean, going to be sick. <laughs> I packed it in ice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just just having the pancakes just ru rumbling around in syrup all day sounds like a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> you leave the inn, <laughs> heading out into the town square. You see a crowd has gathered in the center of town. Oh, I wonder what they're up to. <laughs> Let's go find out. <gasps> Alina, Alina, why don't you why don't boat. you go over there and just take a look around really quick? Boat, boat. Do you think they're they're looking for some some wrestling? I don't know. I haven't taken the temperature of the crowd yet. We'll have to go see. What do you need me to go look for, Bo? Oh, just you know, just uh, look around, see if you can make eye contact with anybody, um, and see what happens. Eye contact has never been the risky thing. We make eye contact all the time. We've made eye contact for months. You're making eye contact right now. Like, yes. Well, you can always pull down your mask while you're doing it to see a little better. That 
doesn't make sense. Well, it might help. Like, you never know. It's like that uh, old British show, Look Around You. Look Kosa, around you. Johannes, and Boat. I want you all to roll Arcana for me. Look around you. Have you found what you were looking for? That's right. You're looking for maths. <laughs> I rolled an eight. I got a modified six. Fifteen. Oh, 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 I'm a grandmother. Nineteen. Whoa. <laughs> Johannes and Boat. You two are going to see an enormous green dragon fly across the sky and begin a slow descent into the town square. Holy the shit! Beating of, the wind that comes off the beating of his wings, kicking up dust and wind in huge gales. Koza and Solinar. The two of you are going to see a rather haphazardly created puppet. Somewhat in the style of a large kite, manipulated by a series of visible sparkles, which you assume to be magic, and a rigging of wooden dowels and yarn. Hey, that's not an adult green dragon. Johannes gets his shields out and begins running towards the square. We gotta protect the people! Oh no. I think Solinar is actually gonna draw attention and fall out. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry, was there something threatening about this puppet? We landed in the town square. I mean, so Boat and Johannes are seeing a full adult green dragon. Oh, but I'm seeing a pu- Oh, okay. You are seeing- You- You and- Solinar are seeing a patched together homecoming parade float, essentially. At the center of which, as it descends down, sitting in a little wicker woven chair at the base of everything, manipulating it with a series of pulleys, levers, and string, is a kobold. Johannes, you and Boat are going to see the green dragon threateningly strut around in a circle before ducking its head low and speaking loud to the populace, demanding in a low, hissing voice the tribute for that month. You see, as this is being said, the townsfolk are scrambling to deliver valuables of Handfuls of gold, family heirlooms, vases, old swords, things of various values, but very clearly important to the people giving them. I run in front and I, with both my shields, I'm like, stop your reign of terror, dragon, unless you're a good dragon, you're, you stop right there. Stop your extortion unless you're a good dragon is a hell of a take. Yeah. Um, I've got an idea that Koza wants to try. These people have lived under your bar signs for too long. Koza's... Oh, what have we here? A man with the shield who knows the theme song for the city. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Chaz hands, Chaz hands, box step, box step. Um... Do you challenge me? Oh, Hulk Hogan, you coming out <laughs> here with your hot dog and in your showboating? I'm kind of hoping the game puts an effect on that to make it sound more intimidating, but I only have so much vocal range, you to guys. shift it way down. <laughs> way down. <laughs> just make it 808 bases. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Thanks, just go game. ahead and remix the song into like just some like really sick acid house track. What is acid house? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're gonna find out when this episode comes out. See, when it this drops. is the thing: is that like on the way to Dragon Con, Alon gave me like a a two hour like breakdown of different types of metal. Yeah. And I'm just learning that I know nothing about music on a fundamental so this level. Is why so any you could make up genres, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like it's real. This is why you yeah, go to con. Yeah, this is why you go to cons with uh, with Elon. Is you get these yeah. like awesome rundowns on like really interesting music. It's yeah, mostly acid house. 
<laughs> it's like 80% acid house and 20% anything else. Yeah. And 20% black moth super rainbow. Hell yeah. Although I don't think, again, I don't think 808 is actually like. You could be making stuff up and I would believe you. I, I have to admit, 808 I don't think is a, is actually like an acid house thing. That's more of a 303. We're yeah. going to go to a convention and we're going to have like, as, as, as sometimes will happen, listeners will come up and it'll be super great. And then they're going to start lying to me about the existence of music genres. And I'm going to look like a jackass. I mean, here's the beautiful thing is that they could be trying to lie and still be a hundred percent right about everything they say. Mm-hmm. That's the nice, beautiful thing about music. Because music genres are insane. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Macho right, Man Randy Dragon. So what Dragon. is your special idea? Um, so I see this um this dragon puppet. Do do I pick up on the fact that everybody else has been like charmed by it or like minor illusion or major illusion? Roll insight. Um 12. You're able to tell that most people are significantly more afraid of this thing than would merit its cartoonish look. Okay, so I see this thing. It's like a rickety, like, crappy fabric. Um, are there parts of it that are, like, patched with, like, uh, paper mache? Yes. Okay, yeah. So I, um, I'm i going to cast... Um, Oh, can I, why did I like close my spell list right before I cast? There we go. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cast um, create water over it, um, and so there's a uh, there's the water falls as rain in a thirty foot cube within range. Um, as I need that to be how all spells are read from now on because I love that. Okay, oh, I'll keep that in mind. Would you like another one? No, not just your spells, everyone's spells. The wood spells. of a club or quarterstaff you're holding is imbued with nature's power. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so the, um, the, the there's all of a sudden a bunch of rain just raining down on this rickety half old fabric, half paper mache dragon puppet. Um, and it's quickly becoming a soggy dragon puppet. Johannes and Boat. I'm going to need the two of you to roll an Arcana check again. Five. I'm even more afraid of it. Oh, my God. All right. So, Koza, it does look like you casting this water on it has some has a couple of people seem to be kind of snapping out of whatever illusion has been there. Johannes, you and Boat are seeing Koza summoning an acid rain that is melting the dragon down. It shrieks in pain and horror as it thought its body begins to melt down. Holy crap, Koza. That's pretty fantastic. That's acid, very acid trap of you. <laughs> we saw glimpses of this kobold through like joints and things of the puppet. Is that right? No, you could straight up see it sitting in a wicker chair manipulating the thing in the center. Can I get inside the dragon towards where the wicker chair is? While it starts falling apart, sure. Solinar's gonna clamber on in there. Let me roll a quick stealth. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's a 24. Solinar's gonna clamber on in there as stealthily as he can. Uh, and try I will and... tell you, stealth is going to be kind of a hard, hard needle to thread, but continue. I mean, mostly just trying not to be observed. He might, like, people might see him climb into, like, the guts of this dragon, but he doesn't want to be seen by the kobold piloting the thing. That's, that's really the only goal. Um, and then he clambers on in there, gets as close to the kobold as he can, and he's like, just what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, it's going to turn and clamber and begin running through the guts of its contraption to flee. This is this is presumably not a kobold we've ever met before. No. OK. Uh, Solonar's going to tackle this kobold. All right. Um, athletics. Athletics it is. Yeah, I was sitting there. I was like, that's got to be what it is. Uh, so I got a six for tackling curious. this kobold. I'm fairly certain that's not going to do it unless the kobold rolled really bad. Uh, he did not roll really bad. I'm sorry. I had to test what this was. And so far it is doing nothing to, uh, remove me from what I had just said about music. Um, so 
you're going to jump forward and sort of like hook your arms in this big bear hug motion. The kobold is going to slip through it like an eel coated in olive oil. Stupid goopy paper mache. You get back here. He is going to scramble out through the butt of the dragon contraption he has made. Does the crowd just see this dragon give birth to a kobold live in front of them? <laughs> no. Live They're on seeing... stage. <laughs> <laughs> they are seeing the dragon melt to death. Okay. Uh, Solonar's gonna, I so guess- So Boat and Johannes basically see Solonar, because I'm assuming that they're seeing Solonar, because they're right there. Mm-hmm. Dive shield... into the melting body of a dragon. Yeah, that yeah, tracks. I shield, I shield bash the dragon. I'm gonna try to circle around the outside of the crowd to grab the, um, the kobold. All right. Johannes, roll to shield bash. Koza, roll athletics. Oh, it's one of these days, dice. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I mean, like, even with bonuses, I got less than a 10. I don't know what a melting paper mache dragon that's no longer being manipulated to armor class is. So what was it? I got an eight right to your face. So delightfully, that actually is what you needed. Um, yeah. As you bash into this quote unquote skull, um, it gives way almost like it was wet paper and thin metal mesh. Whoa, boat, I'm getting so strong. <laughs> Koza, what'd you get? I got a uh, 14. All right, that is going to be enough. Uh, you leap forward, much like Solinar did, and event and wrap your arms around the body of this squirming kobold. You let me free. Um, I feel like um, you're you're up to to no good in this neighborhood. All right. So thing number one, I need you to understand this kobold is squirming like a cat that is about to be put into a tub full of water. Yeah. Thing number two. Listeners, you can't see this, but everything that Koza is saying is happening while Chapman is jamming the entire hell out to the music track he says is the backing for this scene in his mind. So he's basically like Malibu's most wanted through this scene. Guys, this, I yeah, just want it, you guys to know. Listeners, you can't see this, but he's wearing three pairs of sunshades and he's surrounded by Hatsume Miku body pillows. <laughs> and there's also like some interesting LED yeah. light I, shades I'm, that are going through. I'm surprised cycling. you haven't like complimented the like sick light show, like laser light show with all the smoke machines like currently running in the background. I know, you comment on the smoke in my, my house, but then when Chapman's got dry ice literally like pouring over the table, behind him you won't say anything well yeah because i watched him put the dry ice into the water right before we started recording because it's in that plastic bucket labeled pilk you it just looked like your computer was smoking yeah but i've got pilk buckets too alex i they're not labeled pilk in the background like chapman's got i don't label my stuff chapman uh so you have conquered your Pilky demon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I grabbed the little dude. He's squirming. Um, Unhand me, you fiend! Um, um, I, I, I don't think I will. <laughs> not, not Cobalt until you ex- Cobalt squirm. explain Cobalt squirm. what you were doing here. <laughs> is he? Is he like about to wiggle away from me? I, he's making every effort, but I'm not making you roll athletics 16 times. Okay, I just checked. So, I, so I've got him then. At the moment, okay. yes. Um, a uh, 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 boat, uh, boat, boat, boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Boat runs over toward Cozy. Uh, boat, I need you to suplex this fool. All right. <laughs> boat, boat, uh, boat runs over to Koza grabs the kobold like essentially yeah! like like Does- Koza and I are almost forming like a figure eight because yeah. Koza's got it like from behind and I'm grabbing him from the front yeah and then I'm gonna do like uh like a German yeah! suplex like a belly to so, belly Koza tags out I will tell you he is yeah. squirming for his life and panicking and screaming okay I'm still That's- I'm still doing it <laughs> monstrous all right, roll. What, what do you want me to roll for that? 
a grapple attack, a grapple check. Um, a twenty-one. All right. So his his. Clink. <laughs> and he just gets absolutely knocked out. All right, that was the goal. Um, as he goes unconscious, you see a shimmer of arcane light before the messed up body of the green dragon is shown to be what it is. Nothing but a series of puppeteered parts and string, paper mache, and wire mesh. hey Take that! hey And we all let Johannes have his moment. Yeah, Wait a second! Gonna... That was paper mache! You know the best way to cut paper mache? Uh, with a cheese knife. No, with a paper machete. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> Alex is just looking with a scolding gaze. Mm-hmm. She turned it to happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's stern approval. That's respect. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Just so you guys know, listeners, I have a little seal that flips between being very happy and then I can flip it and make it look very angry. It's currently the angry yeah, seal. Yeah, but it doesn't sing Kiss from a Rose, it- though. Neither does Angry Seal. <laughs> so, the kobold is unconscious. We're letting Johannes have this moment. Solinar, Koza? Uh, I think... Koza was tagged. I think nope. Solinar is going to run out in front of the dragon and be like, People of Beacon Heath, we have slain your artificial overlord. The people are too busy scrambling up their their possessions to give you much thought. This is like one of those episodes of the original Star Trek where they have to beam down and defeat a computer that's enslaving uh, a primitive planet. Also, uh, produce water, a really great way to destroy a a computer that's enslaving a primitive planet. Mm -hmm. It's true. You need not gather tribute any longer. You have been liberated. The people sort of look at you with a mixture of confusion they're, they're not entirely sure what to make of this, but they know they can get their possessions and scurry home. And so they do. Johannes, after you have slain the rest of the paper mache dragon, you and Solinar are both going to rejoin your compatriots, staring at the unconscious form of this little green kobold guy. Howdy there. I want to take a moment while I'm out here enjoying the scenery to thank some of you amazing people who make this production and many more like it possible. Stellar compadres like Bridget the Wise, Kyle Wendling the Clever, Caitlin Allen the Ferocious, Melissa Sweeney the Cunning, Her Majesty the Avial Queen. And Jonathan Cedillo, the brave. Thank you all, truly. And I'll leave you all with a pardon phrase for my homeland, save for only the dearest of friends. May your lives grow to fit your hearts, and wonders flow in times apart. Thank you. What happened to this Muppet? (laughs) (laughs) He got borked, borked, borked.